My name is Marta Machado, I'm 14 years old, and I'm super excited to be interviewing stage and TV actor Neil Crone. Hi. Hi, Marta. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Nice to be here. Um, so I have a few questions for you. Fire away. Um, so my first one is, what inspired you to become an actor? Good question. Um, I think I just all kind of fell into it naturally. I was always, you know, as a, as a kid, fooling around in front of people and, uh, you know, wanting to be the center of attention. Um, trying to make people laugh, that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, so I think, you know, the, the, I think from the minute you get your first laugh, the first time you make a crowd of people giggle, and it feels good, that's the sort of seed that gets planted in you. So I think, you know, from a very early age, I think I kind of knew what I wanted to do. It took me a while to figure out, uh, or to gather the courage to actually make it happen. But I think in my heart, I always knew what I wanted to do. If you didn't become an actor, what line of work did, would you want to be in? I, was, I taught high school for a while. I was a high school teacher. I did that while I was figuring out that I really wanted to be an actor. Um, and I also work as a writer as well. And, and those three things, I think, I, I, I got a hand in all of those. Even though I don't teach at the high school level anymore, I still teach workshops quite often because I like it. Um, so yeah, I think if I wasn't on stage, uh, I'd be doing what else I'm doing, writing or What's it like working on Little Mosque of the Prairie? Little Mosque uh, was a great experience. Uh, we got six years out of that show, and that hardly ever happens. You know, most shows run for a year, maybe two, and then you get canceled or whatever. But so Little Mosque went for six he wonderful years, and it was a great show because it was it was born and raised in, in Canada. It was uh, conceived by a Muslim Canadian woman, uh, Zarka Nawaz, who's a, a dear friend of mine, um, very funny lady too. And uh, it was just a great, uh, came along at a really good time. It was a really, really kind of a healing show. Because um, it kind of came along just you know, post 9 11 when you know, there was all kinds of you know, racial questions going on and people didn't know what to make of Muslims and Islam and all that stuff. And, and here we came along with this funny little show that, that showed you know, Muslim people as being very funny and just like you and I and, and no different from anybody else in the way they live their lives. And, uh, I knew we were doing something very important on that show when I, about into our second or third season, I was downtown having dinner with some friends at an Indian restaurant, and we are kind of talking and I'm eating, and, and I noticed there's somebody standing beside me, and I look over and there's a little Indian girl, and she's standing very shyly, and her dad's right behind her, and he's, she's kind of pushing herself up against his legs, kind of trying to hide, and he's got her by the shoulders, and he, he says, honey, go, you go ahead and tell him what you wanted to tell him. I look at her, and she goes, really cute, she says, I just wanted to tell you that I really like you on your show, Little Mosque. And I, and I laughed because the character that I play on that show was this horrendously <laughs> bigoted, idiotic man. <laughs> and so I looked at her and I said, I said, you've seen the show and you, you want to tell me you like me on the show? <laughs> and, she, and I knew they were Muslim because I, I could see their mom sitting across the way and she was wearing the hijab. And, and, and so that, that to me, I felt really great about that because I felt like I've done a lot of TV and film, and, and, and a lot of it, I, you know, I could forget about it as soon as I'm done, but that particular show, I knew that we were doing something right because we were, we were making people feel good about themselves and we were building bridges and stuff, so that doesn't often happen, but I felt pretty good about that. Is there any TV or film genres that you haven't tried that you would like to try? Wow, I, I would love to do uh, a Western or a war movie. Because as a kid, you know, I grew up in that era when all the movies from about World War II were coming out, right, with guys like John Wayne and all these guys. And, and I, I grew up watching those, and I would love to do one of those. And at the same time, the, the Western was a very popular format, too. Um, and I also like to ride horses, so I would love to put on cowboy gear and, <laughs> <laughs> and put a hat on and go do that. And you get to shoot in really cool places, right? You go out in some beautiful countryside somewhere. So I'd love to do those, too. What's it like working with the cast of Really Me? The cast of Really Me are great people. It's, it's so much fun to go to work there because we know we're going to be laughing all day long. Um, and we work hard. We, do, we shoot, just to give you an idea of how fast we move on that show, 
uh, on a film set, on a, on a big movie, you might shoot three pages of script a day, maybe. On Really Me, we shoot 16 pages a day. So we fly really quickly, and, and that could really get into a bad, turn into a bad situation if everybody wasn't on their game and everybody wasn't friendly and fun. And so they're also, everybody brings such wonderful energy to the show. Uh, Sydney, our lead, is just the, the most remarkable kid in the world. She has so much to carry on her shoulders. She has way more script to learn than anybody else does. You know, she always comes to work with a big smile on her face, and I've told her repeatedly that I just think she's an angel. So uh, we have a ball. I mean, anytime you, uh, you're laughing that much at work, it's, it's always fun. So I know you wrote a book of poetry for kids, and I was wondering why, what, what inspired you to do that? Well, first you have to say the title of the book. I'm going to make you say it. <laughs> you don't know what it is, do no. you? I want to hear you say it. It's called Who Farted? <laughs> 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 and that's the only reason I would ask you to say because I love hearing people say that title of the book. Uh, I, I've been writing poems and, uh, and sort of stories for kids for a long time. I have two boys of my own, and they're 20 and 17 years old now. They're, they're men. Um, but watching them grow up and having a house full of kids all the time, and, and because I worked as a, I always called myself self-unemployed because I'm an actor, I'm at home a lot. And so I was able to be at home with my kids for a lot of time, way more than the average dad would be. So I get to sit and watch my kids and play with them a lot and watch their friends and play with them a lot. And, I, I guess it's a big part of me that's still a kid, which is kind of what I, why I do what I do. So it's very easy for me and fun for me to just write goofy poems <laughs> about what it's like to be a kid. Well, I know you've done a lot of acting for stage as well as television. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between both of them? That's another good question. Uh, the difference between stage and television. I think stage, especially most of my stage work has been comic work, it's been improvisation, that kind of thing, where everything is very big. Right? And, and it's quite large because you're, you're, you're out there and you're in front of an audience of anywhere from you know, 200 to 1,000 people or more. So you've got to project and be a large presence so the back row can see you and understand what you're doing. Whereas film and television can be all about you know, here, right? Just the, the lens is this tight and so it's much more subtle. And when I, was, when I first started out in the business, I think for, this happens to a lot of us who come from theater and whatnot. When you start auditioning for film and TV, you, you get told a lot, especially at auditions, too. You know, bring it down, bring it, bring it down. You're way too big, you're way too big. And, um, and so everything's about the eyes and you know, the subtleties of, and stuff like that. And that took a while to learn that for me. Working on a series is probably the closest to doing theater, like a long run in theater, because you, you get to go to work with the same people every day. You have a job for you know, X number of weeks or even months, so you feel comfortable and you feel confident. And you relax, and you're able to have a lot of fun, and, you, and you, you're going to work with people that you see the same faces every day, and it becomes like a family, the crew and the, and the, and the cast. And so you really feel very comfortable, and I think you start to do your best work because all the jitters are gone. You don't feel like you're going to get fired or you're trying out for anything. You can really relax into the role. So they're very different, um, and I think I have a hard time saying which I prefer. They're just, they're just two different wonderful experiences. So where did you begin with improvisation? I started learning how to improvise. Uh, well, first I went to Second City. I took Second City workshops for a while. And then when I was taking some of those workshops, uh, some friends who were in the workshops told me about a place called Theater Sports. I remember very clearly, you know, my first five minute show. The first time I got to go up from a live audience who had paid to come in and watch us make them laugh. And I'm sure I was terrible um, and nervous and just way over the top, but it, it was so exciting. I'll never forget that. What's the one thing you would suggest to someone who's starting out as an actor? I always tell people to, to follow their bliss. Find out what they love to do and do it. And you, if you, you, won't, you cannot help but be successful at it if you love it. Um, and don't let anybody tell you that you can't make a living doing it. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I became a teacher for two or three years, is because I thought I had to get a real job before I became an actor. So I wasted those three years in a sense. When you're young, find any possible place you can to be an actor, if you, whether that's being you know, on stage at school, doing drama or, you know, uh, school plays, community theater. I did a lot of community theater. And, you know, it, it may seem goofy and unprofessional, but every second you get to spend on stage is a learning moment for you. So, you know, find any possible chance you can to get into a script and, and get into a company of actors or whatever, hang around actors. I know lots of actors who, or people who want to be actors, and they, they're a little terrified of it. So what they end up doing is they end up, they just take classes all the time. They just keep taking acting classes, which is okay, but sooner or later you've got to get on stage and do it. 
So just those two things. I would say don't let anybody ever tell you you can't do it or you shouldn't do it or you can't make a living doing it and then go ahead and do it as much as you can. Thank you so much, Neil, for answering all of my questions. You're very welcome, Marta. It was lovely to talk to you. Thank yeah. you. You're very good at this. You know that? You have a knack. <laughs> she has a knack for this. <laughs>